Okay. Oh, that's why. Hold on. There we go. If I do that, then it can be heard. Okay. How do I... There's the chat. Okay. This is a very chill late night stream, so I'm just going to uh, actually tweet out that I'm doing this. Let's see, how do I... How do I get the link? A single viewer. I believe that's me. Uh, share to. Twitter. See if that gets us anything. Do I have a way to, uh... I just want to check my chat. Yeah. Then is there a way for me to set up... What is... Hmm. Auto... Audio only. Chat only. How do I... Just wanna. How do I retitle this? Oh, I actually have a viewer other than myself. Hello, whoever you are. Feel free to drop in a chat. Um, I'm keeping up with it on my phone, so I should be able to respond eventually. I'm trying to figure out how to actually label what this is, what game I'm playing and everything, but having trouble figuring that out. Let's see, let me see, can I, if I do that, and then I, uh, scroll up, scroll, scroll up, is that it? No, no, that's how I'd block myself. I don't know, I'll just, uh, I'll leave it as is. So, hopefully the audio and everything sounds good. If anything, being an audio professional, I'd feel pretty bad if uh, I couldn't get that part done at least. So let's get into this Stardew Valley. I'll do a new file, because I already have a new uh, loaded multiplayer file. Uh, we're just gonna go, sure, I'm gonna leave it pretty simple. Iggy farm name. Iggy's farm, I guess. I don't I don't have any big plans for this really favorite thing. Uh let's say tuna. I'll hit skip intro because I just want to get into it. Uh standard farm. Standard farm's nice. Let's get into it. Alright. Now early in the morning, in the break of day. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Parsnips, always the best thing to start out with here. Simple, grows pretty easily, and oh right, I gotta clean stuff. Personally, that's my favorite part of this, is just cleaning up the whole farm. Oh, wait, 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 I don't wanna get rid of all the grass though made the mistake first time playing this and ended up with nothing when I finally got a silo. Felt pretty, pretty 
pretty silly. So let's see. Just gonna clean up. Let's clean up over here. Do I have an axe? Is that an axe? It's been a while. I mostly played this on Switch because that's where I originally heard of it. And then uh, I got the Steam version later so that we could play multiplayer. My uh, friends and I. And let me tell you, if you want a relaxing game in these hard times of coronavirus and everything else, play Stardew Valley. It's, it's, it's so, so chill. If you can't afford a... If you can't afford Animal Crossing New Horizons, that is. That is also a pretty chill game. I swear I'll be more high energy than this eventually, but I did advertise this as a chill stream. So, hopefully... Hopefully that, uh... was an accurate description of what you're getting here. If anybody's even watching... I saw someone a minute ago, but... I have to, uh... I have to look down to see that. Oh, I think... giving it a space is a smart idea. Well... Whatever. Who's never heard of an ugly farm? Everybody, everybody compares this to to uh, Harvest Moon, and there there are ways that I can understand that. This is much much more relaxed than Harvest Moon. In Harvest Moon, it's it's more of a strategy game. You know, finding out how to sustain your farm. Finding out how to get the uh, wife that you want and the life that you want and everything. So this is just a much more open-ended, relaxed Harvest Moon, as far as I can tell. I mean, I've never gotten past year two, I think. Which, given everything, shouldn't take that long. Okay, I got my parsnips all set up. Journal, cultivate and harvest parsnip, working on it, introductions greet everybody. Ooh, right. Ah. Oh. Hey, Andrew. I figured you'd be up. I I finally have decent internet, so I'm actually actually able to stream. Everybody else is asleep, so I'm I'm keeping keeping very quiet so as not to wake anyone up. tested, um, I'm not sure if I deleted all of them, but I tested with a couple minutes of, of Peggle <laughs> a little while ago, and I thought Peggle would not be very hard on my computer, but it actually ended up taking up way more CPU than I expected for such an old game. Oh my god, this is killing my wrist, hold on. There we go. Okay. I do not actually play many PC games as of late lot of stuff on the switch especially now that i have the switch hooked up to my computer we finally have a switch per person in the house so my switch has moved to my bedroom and then um coco got the the dope animal crossing new horizons switch which is in the living room i don't know do you care about animal crossing at all Similar to this, it's incredibly chill, but it's also kind of aimless. This this has a bit more of an idea of what you're to do. Oh, wait. It's right. Right click, right? Yeah, there we go. Sam. Huh? What? Uh, okay. Ah, Lewis's birthday on the 7th. Never played either. Well, I will say that this is cheaper, and it's it's very nice. A lot, a lot of people say it's Harvest Moon-esque, but it's, a. Uh, would say I kind of prefer it. Harvest Moon is actually really stressful, because if you don't get things done on time, you fail pretty easily. But, uh, with this, Penny, if I have time, I'm going to go the Penny route on this one. I usually go the Penny route. She's a cutie. Animal Crossing is okay. I would not be into it if Coco was not into it, because I just, I find it not necessarily tedious, I just 
I find myself running out of things to do, and somehow Coco spent like nine hours playing it yesterday on launch day, and I just, I don't get, I don't know what she did. I don't know what she did for all that time, because it's just, you're kind of hanging out, and there are bugs existing, and you catch them, and that's, that's kind of the game. You catch the bugs, you give them to the owl at the, the museum, and that's about it as far as I can tell, but it's it's very relaxing and everybody's very nice, which is nice for video games. Oh, that's right, I gotta load up on wood for that one. Going to, I'm going to finally get an Elgato soon. I'm waiting on some Amazon credits. They're supposed to go to my account in the next week or so, and once those go through, I will, I will order an Elgato, and I will stream a bunch of Switch games. But right now, right now, I kind of just have to go with the computer, which my... Oh, yeah. I didn't, uh, did not realize that, um... Sorry, I'm like really tired. My um took me a minute to get what you were saying. Yeah, you know that's fair. Um it's just always going to be difficult in one of these states. Once you end up in Washington, you won't even have to worry about it. It's, it's truly a civilized land up there. gotta say, yeah, I've never been big on edibles either. They're, um, just kind of underwhelming, I guess. They're also really slow. I do remember one time in, uh, in Washington, when I was still living up there, um, we got these, like, just, like, ch chocolate, it was just, like, milk chocolate edibles, and we, like, had them while we were waiting for the bus and we were confused that why they were not really doing anything for us and then like two hours later we realized we had taken like way too many we had had like three each and it absolutely wrecked us hmm <sighs> I miss those days up in Washington it's a, it's just nicer weather more uh more friendly people, more access to, like, good stuff. Down here, every, everything's just kind of closed off. Like, if you don't have a car, you just can't really do anything. That really, really sucks. I'm going to chop down this tree. I, I always get the inclination to do this one for some reason. Holy shit, you, like, went from, like, nothing to going hard in the fucking paint within, like, <laughs> within, like, months. Like, I'd, I'd say pace yourself, but honestly, yeah, it's not like you could easily take stuff with you in terms of that, but... I mean, once you, once you're up there, you're gonna, um, that's true. I mean, it's also, like, just general body mass. Um, it's incredible how quickly your tolerance builds up, too. Like, I was a complete lightweight at first, and then after a few, a after just, like, a couple months living in Vancouver, um, I, I, I was actually being able to be casually high, which was a different experience. I did not do it very often. I, I was trying to be responsible because when you have free access, it actually encourages you to be responsible, 
with it. Funny that. Uh -huh. Oh god, my farm is such a mess. Gotta clean this up. What? What? God damn it. I always forget that it follows your mouse. Ugh, yeah, I'm getting some slowdown. My CPU is not loving running OBS and running the game. Sleep. Yes, please. Saved. Day one. All right, on to day two. I feel like I could get through the first couple weeks. How long did that take? That was like 10 minutes, I think. So, yeah. Ooh, I got mail. Uh, da, da, da. Get a. Oh, yeah, I can get a bigger backpack eventually, but I don't have enough for it. Oh, yeah, Willie. The shipsman. Oh, before I forget, gotta water my crops. Water. Water. No, one thing that I was always disappointed in was that I really enjoyed Ross and Barry playing this on Steam Train, and they only played like a handful of episodes and didn't really get very deep into it. But it's such a delightful little game, and especially with Barry. Like, I could tell, like, Barry could get a ton out of this. Um, shit, how do I do crafting? Crafting, there it is. Chest, 50 wood. Okay, I gotta chop down another tree. Chop, 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 chop. Eh, come on. All right, that should give me just enough. Perfect, okay. Yeah, this jankiness is really not doing great. If I do this again, it will be on the Switch when I get that Elgato. I feel like they've gone up in price. Didn't they used to be like 150 bucks for like an HD 60? Because when I was checking on Amazon, they're like 180 now, which seems seems pretty high. This chest on the. Oh, but, oh, right, I can't. There's not enough space. Let me just. Yep. And da, 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 yeah. Okay, and then I'm actually gonna rearrange these for a pickaxe over here. Dump. Uh, scythe and watering can. Alright. Everything set. Oh, is there new to the beach? Is it the beach before five? Will I have all oh, my crops done? Let me refill my watering can. Hmm. Ah, <sighs> you know the quarantine. It's it's really unfortunate for most people, but it has done very little to disrupt my life because I already wash my hands way too much and don't leave the house. Which is one of, one of the many benefits of working from home. Now if we could just get Corey to wash his hands more, we would be safe. I get on about that too much. He's probably fine. It's just a p pandemic, bro. I've played enough games with pandemics that I can... Uh, I can see the danger coming. I want to stop in its tracks. I'm just a germaphobe and a hypochondriac, honestly. Like I'm, I'm way more worried about that stuff than I really need to be. I gotta be though. The thing is, when you do voiceover stuff or really anything vocally, <laughs> that's absolutely true. We always give Corey crap for having huge crazy yaoi hands they're just like like fetish art detailed um 
Yeah, I've ju I'm just, we're, even like a little cold sucks when you have to talk all the time. Even right now, like my voice is only vaguely tired and I'm noticing like every little pop and crackle. You just get to be hyper aware of that stuff. And the easiest way is to just not get sick, but it's hard when you don't really have control over what's coming in and out of the house. I'm just generally a control freak. That's that's just my like genetics though. Like everybody on my dad's side is a total control freak. Um me especially. I love the restraint of not having like music in this part. Just the the environmental sounds. It has this aesthetic of like a much older PC game, something you'd see in like I don't know, like the the late 90s. But more advanced because we actually have the technology to do more interesting things. Hold on. <clears throat> oh man, sorry. Excuse me. There are not many fish. I think I'll fish a little bit. Can't see any of the really good spots. Let's see if I remember how to do this. Mm hmm. Bloop. Bloop. Anything? Oh. Ah, I missed it. Just gotta wait for a bite. I like games where fishing feels like actual fishing. Just kind of sitting there and... Oh, there we go. Just kind of contemplating. Whoa. Oh, 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 oh. Just gentle, gentle. Gotta keep it on the fish, and we are good. What'd I get? Sunfish. Oh, yeah, there's like a thing. There's like uh, kind of achievements where you have to give the these little spirits at the uh, community center different inventory items, and they need like one of each fish from each season and they give you bonuses and stuff and then the community center gets built up it's a whole thing this this game is delightful oh oh oh, oh, oh crap 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 oh I, oh i messed that one up oh i messed that one up real bad can i fish in the barrel let me try and fish in the barrel see what happens here yeah no that does not let you. That would have been cute. I... <laughs> I haven't played Assassin's Creed, but I have watched the movie. Is it like that? Do you play as Michael Fassbender? I love Elliot, fucking Fabio boy. See, see, I knew a punchline was coming there. I, I knew, I knew, I knew. Hold on, is anybody around? I'm gonna search some trashes. Technically, technically, if you don't get caught, you can search all the trash you want. <laughs> You're polluting my chat. Anyone coming to see my stream will think this is some sort of debauchery. It's a good wholesome stream. I'm just walking about and talk talking to small goth girls. How many of the people have I talked to? There's like a, there's a list somewhere. 
Where is the list? Social. Who have I not spoken with? Uh, wow, most of the people. I mean, I just talked to... No, that's not Abigail. That's, um... Oh, uh, what's her name? Ju Ju June? Jewel. Ju Joy? I don't know. Lewis. Here we go. Grocery shopping. Talk to Pierre. Yeah. How much is this? Gotta know for later. Oh, nope. Oh. 2,000. That's not that bad. But I don't have it right now. Can I can I come in? I don't there I don't mm, I don't think they want me to bug them while they're exercising. Hmm. Maybe I should go clean up my farm a bit more. Yeah. Yeah, it's getting later in the day. That's the thing. You can stay up and as well, not quite as late as you want. You can stay up until like 1 a.m. I think it is. But if you're out for too long, it actually affects how good your farm is, and I don't want that. I want a nice farm. I want a nice, nice cute little farm so that I can have a nice cute little animal. The the animals come later though. Gotta get gotta get a house for the animals. And what are you think in that house? No, not that house. That's my house. Can't let an animal in my house. When you get, like, a pet, uh, they don't really hang out in the house. There's a farm animal. They hang out outside. Let's see. Da -da -da. Drop off the stuff. I think I want to hang on to the stone and the coal, though. Uh, oh. Let me... Rearrange stuff here. Okay. Got the fishing pole. Da -da -da -da. Hmm? Oh, I need the, the axe for that one. Uh, five. Nope, two. All these tools look the same. I guess there's like the pickaxe, but that's the rest of them look very similar. I'd be a terrible radio DJ. I can't think for the life of me of a way to fill up this this dead space. It's probably why my Let's Plays always sucked. I tried to make Let's Plays in like four different like eras of my life, and each time they just went nowhere because they were they were fucking awful. I just had no confidence, and I didn't know what I was doing. That's true. Well, any everybody does. I feel like that's the main reason Grumps works so well, is because one of them can just focus on talking and the other one can focus on gaming. Which I'm I'm rewatching. I finished up all the Super Mario the Super Mario Maker 2, which there wasn't very much of, where it was pretty much all Aaron playing, and then I went back to watch Mario Maker 1 and it surprised me that they're just like taking turns. Seeing Danny play at all is the like surreal almost at this level of grumps. Rocks. Who put all these rocks here? Who put all these damn rocks on my farm? Grandpa eat these for me? Should I be tearing these up if he did? I'd feel very bad if he came back from the dead and got mad at me for breaking up all his rocks. Eh, it's probably fine. He's probably happy with uh, what I'm choosing to do. Oh, it's getting dark. Shit, I gotta get back home. A lot of co-op games. I, I've noticed that um, 
I, I've been meaning to watch them again. I've just, like, have not watched them regularly in, like, honestly, years at this point. But uh, I do see their uploads from time to time. They've been doing Chrono Trigger mostly lately, which I know a lot of people really like Chrono Trigger. I've never been super impressed by it personally, but I don't know. Maybe they made it fun. I'd, I'd have to check it out. I have not watched any of their Ace Attorney playthrough because, uh, <laughs> I don't know, I feel like it'll be bizarre to hear the voices that they give them after how long I've played those games and had my own voices in my head for all those characters. Although, a really good playthrough of Ace Attorney is Press Buttons and Talk, which is Pro ZD and his friends um, thing. And because they are actually working voice actors, their their readings are really, really good and really, really entertaining. Pro ZD, if you don't recall, he's the guy who did it. Uh, make it very yeah. That sounds like that sounds like them. Ah, uh, I gotta, I gotta. Gotta catch up, man. It'll be easier now. They're only doing like, like a few videos a week, really. Hmm. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. Mm. I mean, what else can you do than ship all those characters together? They definitely, they definitely invite these comparisons. I was about to say I need to water my crops, and then I remembered it's raining. You don't gotta, you don't got water in the rain, which is a blessing when you have a huge farm. And you're just like, God, it's gonna take me like 20 minutes just to do the watering, and then it's raining, and you're like, Yes, thank you, thank you, Sky Daddy, thank, thank you. I wonder if I fit... Well, no, I think if you fish in the pond, it just gives you, uh, trash. How long do these parsnips fucking take? I'll deal with that later. I think everybody's gonna be inside because it's raining. Let's see. Let's see what they got. I don't know if you can hear it on the mic, but my computer is, is whirring like crazy. It makes literally no sound any other any other time I'm using it but as soon as I'm using OBS it just silly machine listen that too there are many blessings in that scenario I don't know do they save a chat log on Twitch I know YouTube can, but, uh, I'm curious if I should be actually reading what you're saying, or if maybe I shouldn't read it at all, because then it will pollute my stream with all sorts of debauchery. Hey, hey, what are you doing out here? Yeah, ugh, my voice is so tired, and I'm also not, like, projecting, because I don't want to be too loud. I did plant spring crops. I should buy some more. If they're open, I think they're closed on Wednesdays. <sighs> Andrew, no, I shan't be your prophet. You already tell your sermons on your own Twitch channel. The, uh, what, what's your Twitch name again? Is it also AD Benj? Let me know, tell me I will I will promote you on this channel that only you and I are watching <laughs> at the moment. Sardine, I don't know where I'm going to get a sardine. Damn it, it is closed on Wednesdays. Well, that sucks. Or I guess your channel would also just be Andrew D Benj, wouldn't it? Go go if you want to hear the the highest debauchery. Andrew DeBenj can supply on on his streams. Ooh, which 
I don't know how long they saved the streams, but I have been on there once or twice. <laughs> Listen, I am tired and not bright at the best of times, all right? I get that the chat says the name of the person. I wasn't thinking of that. I don't know. There's there's a weird disconnect on... Oh, are you not streaming on Twitch anymore? Well, that's fair. Hmm. Uh... Yeah, I literally only started it up because we actually got our internet upgraded, so figured it would some could be something I could try. On top of everything else, on on days when I'm not having to be quiet, I'll probably uh, be a bit more entertaining. But we're just being chill right now. We've been going about forty minutes now. That's pretty good, I think. Right. Three, six minutes. Are you streaming anywhere else, or are you just... Are you done with streaming now? Hmm. I mean, yeah. I feel like... Pretty much you and maybe a couple other people will watch my. In fact, I should have put in a dis this one Discord chat that I'm doing this. My but I mean, yeah, I don't know, man. I'm enjoying myself doing this. I'd be playing games anyways, but like, if there's a a possibility that someone might get some enjoyment out of it as well, I'd I'd like to be able to provide that to them, you know. Be an ultra. Oh, right, I can't just drop that. I gotta. Uh, trash the clay. Take the base. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. That's the thing is that, like. The, the capability to get yourself out there. Like, there's so much opportunity to get your stuff out there, but at the same time. That's afforded to everyone with an internet connection. So, this oversaturation is incredible. If you didn't, like, get started, like, years ago already building an audience, you're kind of, like, kind of screwed. I'm still holding out hope, though, you know? I got I got a hundred something subscribers on YouTube. That gotta be worth something, right? That gotta be worth a, a cup of Joe on a Thursday. I think it's like a hundred and thirty something at this point. I don't know. It's not much. It's not enough to get monetization under their new thing, so it's just a another metric for me to stress over. Although I am working on, I made those those board game tutorial videos, Iggy Kids Whiteboard Games, on YouTube, which I am personally very proud of. I put a lot of work into those, and I was pretty happy with them. Although I'm completely revamping them for the season two, where I'm just I'm getting an actual camera instead of just recording with my phone, which will help things a lot, and a much better table that doesn't wobble like crazy. I mean, hopefully it doesn't wobble like crazy. It has, like, built-in, um... It's just like a poker table, so it'll have built-in felt and everything. But also, I'm gonna do a voiceover tutorial series, because in reality, uh, like I was saying with content, you can do, like, pretty much anybody can do voiceover if if they really try like it's incredibly affordable now and it's it's super um let me give my guy no 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 i don't want to eat it give it to give it to this guy there you go linus have a fish help my boy linus out 
It's rough, dude. He's sleeping in a tent, hanging out outside for some reason. But, um... Yeah, I, I want that to happen. I also want somewhere to direct people when they're bad at voiceover to give them an idea of how to be good. Because it's, it's shocking how many people are just really bad at voiceover and don't understand why. And a lot of the times, it it's just technical problems. Like, people will have, will buy a microphone and then just be like, why does it sound like crap? And it's like, well, you're, not only are you talking into the wrong side of it, but it, you also connected it wrong. The, the equipment you're using to connect it, the interface is all wrong, and you're just doing it in an, an empty bedroom, so everything's gonna be bouncing around the walls and sounding like garbage. These are just simple things, and it's so easy to fix, and I constantly on like subreddits and stuff telling people how to fix it and I just realized like why don't I just make a YouTube series because I've thought before of doing that but it was always with the Dunning-Kruger hubris of like years ago when I first started and I'm like I could tell people how to do this not realizing that I was even less experienced than they were but now I actually after doing it for about eight years now about 2012 is when I started doing voiceover. I actually have like the experience and the ability to make something both entertaining and informative on how to get started in voiceover. So I'm gonna be doing that someday. I mean, the dirty truth about entertainment is that it doesn't really matter who you are or what you do. What matters is how well you can market yourself. And that's the thing that I'm fucking despising about voiceover lately, is that I'm just at a point where I know I have the skills, I know I have the equipment, I know I can compete, but I don't have the marketing skills. And I hate marketing so much. It's so scummy and awful. And I just hate learning about it. And that's that's what's holding me back. I could be making a much better living than my pretty meager one I'm getting if I if I took the time to learn more about marketing. But every time I do, I just have this this hippie artist these hippie artist jeans that I got from my parents and stuff of just like um rejecting all, all of the 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 oppression of marketing and the just utter two-facedness of it this is just it's so fake and uh, uninspiring and I don't want to do it like, as soon as I can get a client, as soon as I get a client, I have no problem interacting with them and doing everything I need to, but client acquisition, all of that shit, is like... Uh, it just feels like selling my entire soul. And it hurts. It hurts me. I'd be a lot better if I could actually speak up. Yeah, I feel you. I, I have pretty frequent doubts about, like, should I even do voiceover? But after eight years of, like, that being my focus and it being my, like, main skill set, I don't have much of a choice. That's exactly the thing. Right now, like, most of my work is not doing voiceover. It's making voiceover demos for other people. And it's, it's not unenjoyable work. Like, I'm still working for myself and I'm still doing creative work. Like, there's some fun sound design stuff in creating voiceover demos, but it's not what I want to be doing. I want to be doing, I want to be doing, like, full union character work. And it would be, it, it would be so much more enjoyable than what I'm doing now, which is just audio production for other people's careers. Gotta buy 
let's see, 10 days, and it's the, well, it's fourth, so it's not so bad. Ugh, excuse me. Mmm, if I... Oh, god damn it, my inventory's full. Let me sell these. What do I want to get? I'm going to get... Potatoes are always a good choice, so I'll get like 10 of those. And I'm broke. I forgot how broke you start this game. <laughs> Whoops. Oh well. Gotta go plant these before it gets too late. <coughs> oh. Excuse me. been using Entertainer's Secret, which is just aerosolized um, glycerin and aloe vera and some other things. And it it definitely lubricates your throat, but it also fills your throat with all kinds of gunk. Which means that I have to uh, clear my throat a little more often, which I'm, I, I'm pretty sure I'm not even supposed to be doing. It's supposed to be pretty damaging to clear your throat, but I've read that if you do it more vocally with a ahem rather than a uh, 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 can be better. But, I don't know. I've, I feel like I've already kind of wrecked my throat as it is. I have all kinds of weird ulcers and stuff back there, which doctors have said are fine, but I don't really believe them. Listen, I know... I knew as soon as I started saying that, that I was setting you up for something. And on one hand, I'm proud of you for coming up with something, but on the other hand, this is, this is a good Christian stream for good kids, and we won't have any of your debauchery here, alright? You'll get, you'll get shadow banned for 20 minutes in the corner, and uh... We'll see about you coming back. I don't think that's what shadow, ba shadow banning is. <laughs> it's a term I remember from when I was on Tumblr. I believe it's just unfollowing someone. Or something, I don't know. I had no problem dipping out on Tumblr when they did all that nonsense with uh, banning adult content. And it's not even that I was posting adult content or anything, it's that I can't trust a site that has such confusing... Listen, <laughs> you keep saying these things like there won't be consequences. Do I know what these consequences are? No. Am I trying to brainstorm some? Maybe. Will will they be full of a righteous wrath? Most assuredly. If the if well, I guess I don't have anything set up. I know that there's ways to set up the chat so you can see it on the stream. But this is gonna be Listen. This is going to be totally incomprehensible to anybody who watches this back. And eh, whatever. This is more of a test than anything just to see, like, what I can actually do. Which is, uh, not much with the, this current setup. But, I will, I will work on something. What, what does that mean, Jody? Okay. Caroline... Hey, hey, Jazz. Hey, Jazz. Vincent, never mind. One of these kids is named Jazz. Oh, you say these things. You say, you say these things over and over again. Where? What? What is my goal? I think that's the larger question here with this. What is my, like, plan? I, yeah, pretty much. There was, 
There's uh, Jenny Nicholson has that uh, a reading that she did of what was it, Dark Moon Rising? The yeah, this is Jazz. See, see, I was making that up. Hi to you too, child. What are you doing in the woods? 19 of 28. I believe the last one is the wizard who lives on the edge of town. Um, but there, she has that reading of that one, and that's the one that's like a, a Raylo fanfic. And there's like one of the characters' names is something like Jazz. So someone in the comments made that joke of like, my name's Jazz. Jazz what? Hugh Jazz. God, I gotta say, that scene alone would make Rise of Skywalker be pretty bad, but that whole movie was so dumb. I... I, I, I don't even know where to begin with how stupid that movie was. But the thing is, it was more entertaining than Last Jedi. And I like Ryan Johnson a lot. I was pr pretty sad that it didn't really turn out that great for him. And I've gone over this over and over again, but it's the, the issue w w wasn't even his fault. They brought him in and he actually put his personality into it. Like the dialogue, the humor, it's all him. But the problem is it just doesn't work for Star Wars. Like his humor just doesn't fit in that universe and the tone or any of it. But at the same time, it did stuff that Star Wars should have been doing for ages. Like, ah, man, I just going from Last Jedi, which was disappointing, but like was at least trying stuff to Rise of Skywalker. That's just a mess. Just an absolute, absolute dog shit mess, but is still more fun because you're not wincing at all of the horrible, like, eh, misplaced humor. Because that's the thing, it's like, those scenes in isolation are funny, but it, it just, it's like a serious scene that suddenly stopped for like two minutes of improv comedy and then pops back into the seriousness. There was just no melding of it at all, and it's, it's... This entire Star Wars trilogy has been so disappointing, man. I had I had I had high hopes because Rise of Skywalker was not the best necessarily, but definitely what we were looking for in Star Wars at the time. Just something fun and high energy. And then it all just kind of fell apart. If I enjoyed the first two, I don't think so necessarily. I, I think the problem is that someone put this so perfectly on Twitter, which is that um, they said that the it's, it's wild that Disney decided when making a multi-million dollar franchise to just wing it instead of planning things out. And that's the thing is like, I liked the first one and I still do. And I'm kind of coming back around on Last Jedi. Like, I, I, I feel like it's actually pretty good. Um, in theory, but then actually watching it, I'm like, oh, no, that's right. I hate this comedy. And I love Ryan Johnson's comedy in any other film. But in Star Wars, it's just so out of place. And then Rise of Skywalker is just not good. It's just pandering and very poorly made. But I didn't say I didn't like it. <laughs> um, I did actually really, really enjoy Rise of Skywalker, but I recognized that it was awful 
It was really, really dumb, and it was a terrible conclusion to the trilogy. But that's okay, because it was actually really, really fun. Um, so I, I, I'm... Uh, I don't know. I, yes, actually. The, the thing that I found most disappointing in... How do I... Oh, you gotta be facing it. Okay. Oh, should I do a Jojo Mart round? Or Jojo Mart run? Oh, that makes me too sad. This is happy stream. Um, my thing that was most disappointing about Last Jedi is the potential where Kylo actually gave Rey the opportunity to join him. And as soon as he did that, like, I recognize that it was just homage to when Vader did the same thing to Luke. But as soon as I saw that in the new context, I immediately thought, that's actually really interesting. Could these two who have been pulled so deeply towards the ends of radicalism of the Force, if they come together in in the middle of the force to create a different different paradigm for this could that actually be good and i honestly wish that's what she'd done if ray had decided to go with kylo ren that wouldn't have necessarily even been going to the dark side that would have been re creating the dark side and the light and in fact, that even feels like what they were leading to. I feel like it was the fact that she rejected it must have been a Disney mandate. Because with everything, with Luke saying that the there's no light side, no dark side, that was all fallacy. Like, that's absolutely true. I feel like the whole point of the thing was to remove this, this black and white radicalism that had been worked throughout the whole thing, and I would have absolutely loved to see them do something with that. But then it just kind of ended with a whimper and went into a ton of schlock. And that's unfortunate. Oh. I... Well, wait. Mace Windu died for sure in the prequels, right? Or did he not die until the other expanded stuff? I never watched Clone Wars. Huh. Uh, it's been so long since I've watched the prequels. I've been going back and forth whether I should suggest that Coco watch them. Never see a body. Okay, fine. I'll accept that. I always feel that, like, the whole you never officially see a body thing is kind of a little too literalist, which I don't really care for in storytelling. Okay. If it's been confirmed that he's canonically alive. I don't know. I, I, I'm I pretty sure he does show up in Clone Wars, actually. I was just watching um, James Earl Taylor had a vlog when he was in... In their recording as Obi Wan, um, I want to say, was it Gary Anthony Williams who plays Mace Windu in that series, or is it Phil Amar? They're both in it. I can't remember which characters they play, but I'm pretty sure one of them plays Mace. I don't know. I want to watch that show. I, I I really love James Earl Taylor, and I'd love to see him in what is really his like biggest role like the one that he talks about the most and he wouldn't say that it has more importance but like between obi-wan titus from final fantasy 10 and johnny test i feel like the most respectable one is obi-wan kenobi he has other stuff in there but those are like his three major roles 
and one, one of these things is not like the other. One of these things is good. It's always interesting hearing him talk about Titus, because he still has a lot of reverence for that character. I mean, that character is one of his larger ones, recording for a video game, especially in Final Fantasy. Like, there's so much text that you have to, like, get into the character for. Like, just months on end. And so, he definitely understands the character, I think, better than any of us do. Yeah, no, I I think Final Fantasy X is pretty terrible. I don't really care for Final Fantasy in general. Turn-based turn -based RPGs are one of my least favorite genres. I find them incredibly tedious. I can, I can make a pass for Pokemon sometimes, but very rarely. Um... Yeah, I, I feel bad, because, like, he definitely... He definitely loved playing Titus, but it, it's just kind of a laughing stock because it's it's not even that it's a bad performance, it's just not a very good character. Like he's pointed out many times that the reason he played Titus that way is because that's how Titus was written. He is a spoiled, rich sports playing brat, so he was played as a spoiled annoying brat which isn't a very endearing or fun character to watch but is definitely what they made so it was effect no, fuck. it was effective for its intention i guess i had just um even him talking about the laugh and i agree i honestly agree is that uh that whole laughing scene like yeah it's ridiculous but that's kind of the point it was not supposed to be like a serious laugh. It was supposed to be crazy and over the top. Um, that being said, was it a good choice? Uh, I mean, a big choice is better than no choice is what they say in acting, but I'd, I'd say another choice would have been better. <laughs> Oof. It's acting is all about choices in the moment, man, and I don't think I agree with that one particularly. I'm not getting anything here. I need to move to a different spot. Hold on, are there any of those ripples? If there's like a ripple, you can like, um, usually means that there's more fish. Have I talked? Hey, I ain't talked to you. Hold on, where's she at? There you are. Talk to me. Pam. Oh, hey. Wait, Penny works here? Oh, I didn't know that. I never go to the Jojo Mart because it's... It's full of corporate garbage. Oh, God damn it, I need to talk to Shane. Uh, you would think that, but he does it exactly like that like very often on his podcast and in his um vlogs and stuff he just does the laugh and he's like yeah no that's what i meant like you would think that like there's got to be a better take but it's like no that's just how he does it that's how how he wanted to do it that's he he sticks to his guns he says yeah that's what i meant to do i don't <laughs> it's it's kind of endearing i i appreciate his confidence and I definitely say watch his vlogs and stuff. Like, there's a ton of awesome content on his YouTube channel. Because he's been in show business since, like, the early 80s in radio and in cartoons and movies and stuff. So, there's a lot of awesome stories he has from all over show business. And his podcast is okay. I will say he's a bit, uh... He proselytizes, proselytizes a lot on his podcast because he is definitely a born-again Christian and is not shy about it. So 
sometimes his podcasts do devolve into him talking about the good glory of God and Jesus and uh, I'm trying to run a business here. You and your innuendos you ruin my my, my business. While I'm trying to make this work, you know what? I should be selling these parsnips. I gotta make some money back. Ah, uh, fuck! That's not, I. I need the money. I need need the money. Hey, here's the thing. You've been keeping up with Game Grumps. Um, what does the gotta eat the lettuce thing come from? <laughs> Cause I like that I, I I like that running joke, but I can't find when it start when they started doing it. And I'd I'd like to be in on the in on the joke. God, I've made no progress. This farm sucks. Farming sucks. Why do we do this? <laughs> You know, that's a fair point. I, up until like 2016, I watched Grumps religiously, like every day from their first upload. And then I moved in, I moved to Vancouver and just life got crazy and I ended up not watching it as much and fell off. Hannibal Burris. Oh no. That's unfortunate. I, what the fuck? Oh, god damn it, my fingers got moved over incorrect. Hannibal Burris has unfortunately become just a punk ass landlord now. Ever since he bought a fucking building in Chicago. And I like him on Eric Andre, and I like his stand up, but. Back on Eric Andre. I o I've only watched the first season of Eric Andre. I need to watch the rest. It's so fucking good. There's also like a show. Or not a show. There's a movie. It's like a road trip movie that includes like Eric Andre style pranks. That stars Eric Andre. That um I can't remember what's called. It was supposed to come out like last year. It might have. I only saw like one trailer for it in theaters but I would I would like to see that at some point I guess I could just look up his IMDB see what that's all about oh you don't like Eric Andre I I mean I can understand that it is a very specific thing it's incredibly experimental and when you do experimental stuff, it can either work or not work, and far too often does not work. But at the same time, when you try things like that, when you finally find the thing that does work, it can be amazing. Oh yeah, he is on Disenchanted. That show's really good. I need to catch up on um I need to catch up on Futurama. Cause I I watched it back in the original run, the first three seasons. It was the first show I ever watched the entirety of prior to like streaming and stuff when it was actually kinda of difficult to do that. And he, but then ever since they brought it back, I've only seen a handful of things. That's, that's fair. Most live action, uh, Adult Swim shows, I, that's, Adult Swim in general, incredibly, like, experimental, but, like, yeah, very often... <laughs> does not work out which is so so unfortunate because some of them have actually really interesting premises that don't go anywhere I'm still on the fence whether I even like Tim and Eric I, I understand that they are incredibly influential 
but they're definitely one of those things where they were a lot more missed than hit. But at the same time, because of that, we got some stuff that is uh, incredibly unique, I guess, is the best way I could put it. I don't really know if that's positive or negative. I guess it's more positive than they necessarily deserve. Oh my god. Played nearly a week of this. It's been about an hour ten. That's pretty good. It's definitely very leggy. I'm gonna have to gonna have to work that out. Well the thing is if I want to play this again, I have it on Switch, so once I have the Elgato, I can just play it on that, and then my computer can just focus on OBS. Ah! These guys. Got a hip. Nope. Hip. Ah, crap. Oh, I want that. Ah, get rid of this fiber. There's a lot of bad Adult Swim content. But the thing is, a lot of that content is the kind of stuff that would never get made in any other way. Like, Adult Swim is the only network willing to give some of that stuff a chance. So if it weren't for stuff like that, we would never have a Rick and Morty, or a Space Ghost, Brack Show, Squid Billies, any of that. Like, they, they give the weirdest stuff a chance, and they're the only ones willing to. I, well, yeah, I feel like Adult Swim is kind of like, at least in production quality, is like only a, like, half step above public access, you know? I, I don't know. I feel like Adult Swim was like a bigger thing when I was like a kid. Cause I remember so, so many nights just like laying awake way later than I should have been. Just like all of my siblings like asleep on couches and stuff um, in the dark, just watching, watching like home movies or uh, Aqua Teen Hunger Force playing for way too long and then looping again like a few hours later watching like anime on there there's so much anime that I never would have seen if it wasn't for that a lot of it not very good like um I think S. Cryad if that's what I'm thinking it is that show sucked Fooly Cooly was really good though I need to go back and watch all of Evangelion because I've heard it's amazing and I only saw like the beginning of it. Anime is a whole crapshoot too. God, anime, so much anime comes out and so much of it is not good. But the thing is, every now and then when there is a good one, it's never the one you're expecting. Like, the best one right now, the premise is just three high school girls make make a club where they make anime, which is the most generic, boring premise for a show. And it's amazing. It's so fucking good. It's, it's keep your hands off Aizouken. It's, it's... I, I don't know, because that's the thing is, there's no way to describe it that really tells you what makes it so good but every every detail of it everything about the art style everything about the animation and the the passion and the creativity that goes into it is so fantastic and I'd really I never would have given it a shot if I didn't keep up with anime all the time and watched a ton of garbage Because unfortunately, that's most of anime. Even shows that start out kind of fun end up falling apart into just kind of crap. Ah, 
Bob's Burgers. I need to watch more Bob's Burgers. What is the Connors? I will get some. I don't think I have time. Oh, I do have time for beans. I got plenty of time for beans. And mm, my inventory is full. I gotta throw out some rocks. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I didn't realize that they, um, didn't hear that they kept that going wi without her. How does that work? Did they, did they kill her off? Is she Is she canonically dead or did she like move away or something? Um, drug overdose, holy shit. That's, that's really raw. So is it still like, um, like John Goodman and everybody? Fuck, do I go cauliflower or potato? Ah, potato. Mmm. Talk to you. I don't think I've talked to you. Okay, but okay, I will probably give that a shot. I've been mostly watching ever since Mr. Robot ended. I've mostly been using Sling for Fuck That's Delicious, which is a great, great show. Um, Better Call Saul is back and then obviously AEW which is always fan I need to I need to not get behind on dark I, I always get behind on AEW dark and then I have to watch like seven of them in a day to catch up for the pay-per-view I'm only one behind right now but I, I need to get that done I'll probably do that tomorrow I just uh, also all of these debacles with what like WWE is pulling because of coronavirus ridiculous so just the pilot of um, of the new Roseanne and then the Connors Yeah, you told me that the relaunch of Roseanne, like there was already a lot of controversy around that, but you had like that specific problem with um that one that one like sink waterboarding moment. Like that was really messed up. And like yeah, it's just so out of character. Which is wild. I remember liking Roseanne a lot as a kid. Like, I never watched it, like, heavily, but anytime I saw it, I was like, this is, this is, like, pretty good as far as sitcoms go. And this, they, they brought it back in, like, it was trying to make a point. Which, I'm not gonna say that it, it got political, because all media is political. Um, whether it means to be or not, but... Like, everything I've seen of the new Roseanne is it was, like, trying to make, like, a big message about things. And I just can't... I can't get behind that. Especially considering, like, the original Roseanne was just about, like, a blue-collar family that had kind of... Um... If not left-wing, like, more left-of-center views. Yeah, blue-collar progressive. That's the That's the way to put it. I feel like, I mean, the way that they handled it in the original one was, like, felt like actual people, whereas everything I've seen of the new one, it feels like 
just caricatures. And that's... You can't make a statement if you're not using real people. If they're fake caricature people, then everything is just cartoonish. And that's not going to work. Shit, I gotta actually plant these. I don't know if I left myself enough energy to do that properly. Ah, oh, god damn it. See, this is what I'm talking about. There, there is some strategy in this, because with this energy bar and stuff, you can, you can really fuck yourself over. Just gotta plant those beans. I don't think that takes up any energy. I mean, I gotta water them regardless, or they're gonna die, so... Careful. Don't. Please don't let my energy break. Fuck. Overexhaust. Overexertion. That means I'm gonna have half energy starting tomorrow. Oh, look at that. I actually look like sleepy. I never noticed that on the Switch version. I gotta. <laughs> gotta refill my water. I gotta go bed. I'm tired. I'm sleepy. I gotta go bed. <laughs> Uh, let's snap that in. Oh, gotta get in the damn bed. Okay. Yeah, I just, I feel like nobody's okay, IRL. Everything about our current political climate and how attuned to it everybody is, it, we're just not in like a healthy world right now. And something like Roseanne cannot really exist in this climate. Especially not the way they tried to do it. Because, <sighs> like, I don't... I just don't know what... What happened. It went from being... Relatable people trying their best to... Cartoon characters... Just being... Being... Fucking awful. And like, I don't know, we're just not a healthy country right now. We're, we're pretty much just traumatized by how absolutely abused we've been by the system, by the system in general, by the specific administration we're in. And it's, it's frustrating. It's frustrating. I'd like to get back not back, but, like, I'd like to get to a point where we can actually, like, have some kind of forward progression. Because we've just been, we've been backsliding for decades. It's like when you're, you're poor, living paycheck to paycheck, and you finally, like, alright, I'm saving up enough to get a, a nicer place, I'm gonna be able to get out of here. And then your car breaks down, and you just, you lose all that money, and then because you don't have a car, you're just exhausted because you take four hours on the bus every day. And because you're exhausted, you get late to work and you lose your job, and then you have to move back in with your parents, and it's just, that's what we've been doing as an entire nation. It's just, like, bad shit happening, just snowballing into horrible, horrible stuff. And it just put us into such a horrible position for this pandemic to happen. My heart really goes out to everybody who who's really getting affected by this. I'm not, and I'm very thankful in that way. But, like, some people are getting so screwed over. I don't know, man. I, don't, I, I, I hope that things will get better after this election. You know, hopefully we can get Trump out of there. And whoa. 
the the one thing that gives me some hope is that people like a lot of people who voted for Trump are recognizing how absolutely like inept he is at the very least like even though they agreed with those policies like at least they recognize that he himself is an idiot who is not going to do anything good for anybody The Department of Justice always wants to suspend constitutional rights. And they have been since at least the Bush administration, if not earlier. Like, that's the thing, is that it's... To make, <laughs> to make a weird comparison uh, to Magic the Gathering, when Magic the Gathering was still new, they had their core set and everything, and certain cards were pretty rare like the Black Lotus, which is the most famous one for this. Um, and so when they did a reprint, it really pissed off collectors because they wanted to have their rarity and something is not rare anymore if anybody can have the reprint of it. So they made a specific list. I don't, re I don't remember what it's called, but a specific list of cards that can never, ever be reprinted one of which is Black Lotus, and there's a bunch of other core cards that can never be reprinted, guaranteed. And they have not gone back on that, as far as I can tell, after all these years, but um, someone specifically asked one of them, who was one of the, the people who was involved in that, like, hey, if you could, would you go back on that? Like, would you, would you, start reprinting those they said oh in a heartbeat like the only reason they haven't is because they recognize people would lose their minds and that's that's kind of how our country treats the constitution like i everybody in power right now is like wow all of this nefarious shit we want to do is incredibly difficult with the constitution in place but we can't just get rid of the thing wholesale because people will riot so we have to just slowly pretend like we're not getting rid of it entirely, but just kind of, kind of slowly nudge it out while no one's paying attention. And that's infuriating. It's infuriating that we, th they think we're that dumb. And it's infuriating that they're not entirely wrong. On the whole, the average American is dumb enough not to notice that, because the average American isn't even paying attention to politics. Although... That's not as true anymore. Now, nowadays, so many people are deeply tuned into politics in the worst ways because there's so much misinformation about what's happening politically. And it's... it's unfortunate. Though I always think back to when Daniel Avedon was talking about it, he said pretty succinctly, there was a year where he 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 picked, it, I think it was for the mayoral race, maybe, um, but he there was a political position and he followed everything about it, he followed all the candidates, he did a ton of research, made sure he was in there, and they went in to vote made one really informed decision, and 20 complete guesses. Because there's li literally, unless you make it your life, there's no way to keep up. And that sucks. The only way to really be safe is to vote on party lines, and that's... unfortunately means that you might be voting against your best interest, but it you can't uh, humanly tell. Oh, man. I mean, that's heavy, but that's... <sighs> yeah, no. Like... It feels like hell out here, man. Like, just the, the world we're in right now is... <sighs> like, Cody Johnston made... <laughs> is on the podcast The Worst Year Ever, and he's... It's become more and more true every day. And like, 
It's just, everything has been getting so, so bad. And there's like this tiny glimmer of hope off in the distance of, oh, maybe the election will uh, change things. But there's so much that if Biden or Bernie gets in, like there's so much they're going to have to undo to even begin to make things okay again. But I'm I'm cautiously optimistic. I feel that something can happen, and maybe that's just naivety, but Overall, statistically, we are still living better than anyone else in history has. And we're more attuned to how horrible everything's always been and continues to be, but it's it's been slowly getting better every day. It's just more stressful right now because we are in a fucking pandemic and people are not, like, managing it very well at all, the people who need to be. But you know what? We can stick it out and we can find our way through. That's something I really love about a game like this is no matter how heavy things are, just just this fantasy of owning some land, knowing like 20 people, just just working doing doing honest work oh, that's nice it's the, it's the same thing with animal crossing it's just the idea of owning a home and having neighbors you like yeah I'm fucking tired too. I just, it's really hard not to be fucking tired in our current, uh, in our current landscape. And I can totally understand that it, what the fuck is going on? Um, I can totally understand if you, if, Things were already feeling really bad for you before. Like, I was a pretty peppy, optimistic person before we got into the, the climate we're in now, and I've been just so cynical. So, I can't imagine what it is like for someone who's... who was already not having a good time. big, wild world we live in. Really, how bad or good it is just kind of comes down to what works for us. I've, I've made something of a life of just being very comfortably oppressed. And... While it, it sucks to say that you got to turn your brain off and just muddle through. Man, it, it works sometimes. Not always, but on occasion, just putting your nose to the grindstone and not thinking about it is pretty much all you got. God, I have so much grass. Gotta get a silo soon. This is not gonna... This is not gonna be... Very good for my crops. Can't even pick up the fucking acorn. Let me see... How my stream is doing. Three viewers? 
There's a third person here? I wonder who it is. In fact, I think that's... Does it include me if I'm just looking at the dashboard? I don't know, man. Shit's gone very heavy. I, w I was not... Ah. Well, fair enough. <coughs> oh, now it says four viewers. I don't fucking know. Shit's gone very heavy, but... The whole idea with this stream, for the most part, was just to relax, because... The thing I've noticed more than anything is that everybody I've talked to for work and things, all of my clients, pretty much everybody is just going through the craziest, craziest shit, and it's tricky, it's, it's, it's already rough living the way that we do, but it hasn't gotten much better being in a pandemic like this, so. It's nice to just just relax. I think I'm I'm clipping the hell out of the mic. <laughs> I didn't I didn't set the levels very good. I don't think. Let me pop those down a little bit. Uh, I hope that hasn't been going on the whole stream. I haven't been listening to it, so I don't know. I should set my monitor properly next time. I think that's gonna have to do it for me though. That was a little over an hour and a half. That's not bad. For like a f the first real stream I've done so who knows maybe next time we'll be at a better hour with better gaming um with better conversation probably not I feel like a lot of good topics to talk about all over the place but you know what sometimes that's what you get so I'm gonna turn off turn off the stream for now at least my voice is getting very shredded talking for so long so thanks for tuning in Andrew I will continue texting you while I just watch Mario Maker um, that's the end of the stream so I hope it wasn't wasn't too low quality I do not know what I'm doing for the most part I basically just turned on OBS and started playing so I gotta work out how to actually do this whole thing correctly so yeah good night twitch uh, stop stop streaming uh.